people to clean up. There will be a sign-up sheet soon on the bulletin board. It is not there yet, even though we did announce it last week that it was there, but it will be there soon. There is also a Colonel's uh, baseball game sign-up sheet. If you are interested in going on Sunday, June 26th, uh, the sign-up sheet is there, and if you need tickets, how many tickets you would need. I was asked to remind you that today is coffee with the council right after church. And also the fourth Sunday uh, weekend offering is going to the American Cancer Society for the Relay for Life. So keep that in mind as the collection sheets go around. Are there any other announcements from anyone? Okay, this week again, we keep in prayer our Ukrainian Orthodox Church, the Rus- Russian Orthodox Church, other Christians of Ukraine and Russia, as well as all of the people of Russia and Ukraine. Some people are grieving and some people are happy having celebrations. This week, birthdays are Dick, Brett, Kyle, and Bill, anniversaries, Michelle and Chris, and Nicole, excuse me, Nicole and Matt. We wish all of them happy birthdays and happy anniversaries. With that, let us begin our worship. Alleluia. The Lord is risen. risen Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. For the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister, Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In 521. Rest and gladness, O day of joy and light, O balm for care and sadness, most beautiful and bright, and lowly through ages joined in tune. Sing holy, holy, holy. To God the judge I you. Creation, the light first had its birth. On you for our salvation, Christ rose from depths of earth. On you, our Lord, victorious. Send from heaven, and thus on you most glorious, 
a threefold light was given. They unweariness, the heavenly manifold. Vocations, the silver trumpet calls. Where gospel light is glowing, and pure and radiant beams, and living water flowing, and soft, refreshing streams, graces ever gaining from this our day of rest. We reach the rest remaining to spirits of the blessed. Our praises, O Father, Spirit, Son, the church it voices raises. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory, our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, glory are His. The victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. With all the people of God, and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. The victory for our God. Hallelujah. Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Hallelujah. The victory for our God. Alleluia. Bountiful God, 
You gather your people into your realm, and you promise us food from your tree of life. Nourish us with your word, that empowered by your spirit, we may love one another and the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A vision compels Paul to move his, move his ministry into Greece. There he meets Lydia, an important person in the business community, whose heart has been opened by God to receive the gospel. Her conversion and baptism provide the impetus for the founding of the church of Philippi. The first reading is from the 16th chapter of Acts, verses 9 through 15. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace the following day to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia in a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 67 will be spoken alternately. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us. They may be known upon earth your saving power among the nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us, let all the ends of the earth revere him. John's vision of a new Jerusalem coming out of heaven provides continuity with God's past actions. Yet in this new city, God's presence replaces the temple, and the glory of God and the Lamb supplements sun and moon. The second reading is from the 21st and 22nd chapters of Revelation. And in the spirit, one of the angels carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb." The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring, will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices ab abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tr tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, produce producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and his ser servants will worship him. 
They will face his face, they will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. John, beginning in the 14th chapter. Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Growing up presents many times of anxiety. We went through this time with our children. Going to college, attending classes, working to pay one's college bills, doing some extracurricular activities, having time for friends and family can be rather anxious a rather anxious time for those who are just learning to cope with the busyness of life I would tell my kids each one of them make a list whenever they became rather harried and started to worry about not getting things done I would tell them to make a list prioritize the list and then start to work one's way down the list. Making a list is one way of taking control of the situation once again. Instead of letting all the things control you, making a list puts you back in control. Your life once again has a semblance of peace. Almost everybody today carries an iPhone with them to give them some control over the busyness and the worries of their life. They keep calendars and other kinds of information at their fingertips. I have one, but I only use it as a, as a telephone and not as something that holds all sorts of, of, of information. I know that I'm electronically ta challenged. It's always been that way, probably always will. I still re rely on a, a gray book, a daily calendar that I carry with me. Without this book, my life would be a mess, or at least a bigger mess than it is. It gives me some sense of control and thus some peace. It helps me do what I must do when it comes to planning. And that is usually to try to plan 12 to 18 months ahead. If I do not do this, things do not get done. Thus, such planning is one way of bringing some control and some peace to my life. In the Holy Gospel, 
we hear Jesus as he spoke to his disciples on the night before his crucifixion. It is a very long discourse covering many chapters in the gospel according to St. John. The discourse begins in chapter 13 where we hear St. John's words, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. From that moment on, Jesus spoke of his leaving the ones whom he loved, his disciples. And this, of course, produced much fear among the disciples. Peter even asked, Lord, where are you going? To which Jesus answered, where I am going, you cannot follow me now. Which produced even more anxiety and more fear. So Jesus continued to speak with them about his leaving, about his death, and about his resurrection, and about his continued presence with them. It is at this place in St. John's Gospel that we come to our Holy Gospel today. Jesus spoke to a rather nervous and, and fearful group of disciples. And he said to them, I have said all these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will, give, will, will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of, of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Jesus assured his disciples that they would not be abandoned. His very spirit would be with them and give them the gift of all that, that all people so greatly desire the gift of peace. Most often we define peace as the absence of violence. If we are not at war, then we are at peace. But we know that's not quite true. Of course, our nation is presently at war. We're at war with each other and with ourselves. So we do not know that peace. We also do not really know the peace of our Lord. We're not a peaceful people. We want peace in our lives, and yet we daily ensure that we do not know that peace. Quite literally, we do choose to live helter-skelter lives. We're busy beyond all understanding. Every day we seek to try to cram 30 hours of activity into 24 hours of, 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 of day, and we call that living. That's always somebody else's fault. We have stresses and fears in our life that we ought not to have. We're often not satisfied with what we do have. No matter what we have, we have to have at least one thing more. And it's nice if it's bigger and better and more expensive than our neighbors. So many of us measure our life by what we don't have rather than by what we do have. From that perspective, it's, it's very difficult to be thankful for what we do have and to live a peaceful life. We are stressed by our schedules, by the traffic, and just by other people. We know what we want. We have too little time. We're always stressed about money. We never, we just never have quite enough even if we're making more than we ever have had before. To be quite honest, what ails us cannot be solved by Oprah or Dr. Phil. All goodness knows we sure want their advice. P 
peace. Peace in our life, we want it. We might even pray for it, but we sure don't have it. Well, this seems to be a rather apt description of our dominant culture today. You know, the absence of peace in our life just might have to do something with the absence of Jesus in our life. It can be truthfully said that the absence of peace in our life is because of our own sin. It is because we continually try to play God. Make a list, people. Prioritize. And if taking time for Jesus every day of your life is not at the top of your list, then we just might have found the problem. Jesus brings peace to our life. And if we don't have time for the one who brings peace to our life, then it's no wonder their life is as it is. The problem is not that our Lord is absent from us, but rather that we are absent from our Lord. If we do not take time to pray each day, read the Holy Scriptures each day to worship each week so that we can hear God's Word declared to us and to receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And it's no wonder that we do not have peace in our life. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Friends, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, went to the cross and died so that you could know and enjoy peace in your life. Peace is the gift of grace. Peace in your life does not begin with anything that you can do, even making the list. Peace in your life begins with the work of God our Father through His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus died on the cross so that you could know the peace that comes from a new relationship with God. It is sin that separates us from God and thus leaves our lives in turmoil. It is through the forgiveness of that sin, wrought for you on the cross of Jesus, that restores your relationship to God and gives you the peace that the world simply cannot give to you. Quite simply, when one's heart has not been changed by the cross of Christ and by the love of God, there will never be peace in that heart. You see, when you are at peace with God, then you are truly at peace. And you are not at peace with God not by anything that you do, but only by what God continues to do for you and to you. When the heart is still distant from God, there will always be turmoil and fear. St. Paul reminds us in Romans 5.1, Therefore, if we have been justified by faith, We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When God forgives you of all your sin, then you are at peace. It's not the peace of false hope which the world gives to you. It is a peace that comes from knowing that you live daily in God's love and forgiveness. And that no matter what happens, you are always in God's grace. That is God's gift of peace to you. Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, is with you yet today, regardless of the busyness of your life. He's not left you. He will never leave you. That is his baptismal promise to you. The question is, will you leave him? And you will. That is why the Holy Spirit daily comes into your life, washes away your sin, raises you to a new life, 
and lives with you and in you every moment of that day. You are never, ever left alone by God. Jesus answered Judas, not as Iscariot, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but it is from the Father who sent me. Even in the midst of your very busy and chaotic lives, even in the, mix, in the midst of your anxiety and fears, you have the promise that comes to you from your Lord. We will come and we will make our home with you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. This is the love that our Lord has for you. He comes and he makes his home with you and gives you his peace. To live in God's love and forgiveness every day of your life is to know the peace that only Jesus can give, give to you. And he gives it to you now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In uh, six thirty one.
You may be seated. The following persons have been, been chosen to be the call committee are asked to come forward as their names are read. Judith Smith, the chair of the committee. Tom Fruling, Jeff Hand, Marsha Prochnow, Rick Renner, and Linda Singlestad. St. Paul writes, There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit gives them. These are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives ability for some particular service to everyone. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. You've been appointed to a position of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to seek the will of God and the mind and the spirit of the congregation with regard to our pastoral needs. You will examine the qualifications of prospective pastors, interview those who appear to be suitable candidates, and recommend only one person to the congregation council for its approval and recommendation regarding the issuance of a call by the congregation. In all your deliberations, you are, to you are to be examples of faith, active in love, seeking to maintain the life, harmony, and ministry of this congregation. And therefore, on behalf of your brothers and sisters in Christ, I now ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the call committee? If so, answer, we will. People of God, I ask you, will you support these? your brothers and sisters in Christ, in their task, and will you undergird their efforts with your prayers? If so, please answer, we will. I therefore declare you installed as the call committee of this congregation. God bless you and your work together in this ministry. Thank you. Please rise. Let us join together and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. And for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. Catholic and Apostolic Church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and for all creation.
Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations. When those in power seek to assert dominance over others, confound their ways and make them yield to your humble authority. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give safe haven to those who seek healing, liberation, power, peace, especially Jeffrey, Clayton, Donna, Bobby. Hear our prayer. Uphold the work of ministries and organizations in our community to assist people experiencing homelessness, citizens returning from prison, and all marginalized people. Accomplish your will through their efforts. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Assemble your people at rivers, streams, and fonts where we remember our baptism and welcome others into the communion of saints. Gather us with those who have died when we meet together at your river of life. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, we respond to these prayers and, re and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a few moments and share the peace of the Lord with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace of the Lord be with you. 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 Well, thank you. <laughs> I should get it right sometime, right? <laughs>
you, God. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, to our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of God, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in name of God. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come.
God, you take away sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant the body of Christ given for you. 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 The body of Christ given for you.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, for hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. M763. Christ is risen. Christ is risen Go in peace. Tell what God has done. <laughs>